today we're going to make a retort biochar kiln and we're going to show you what we do to make this kiln we're going to use the charcoal for making biochar and also for making charcoal for our grill and we hope you enjoy okay so the basic uh, parts for making a retort kiln is a 55 gallon drum and then another bucket that's going to go inside that drum. See a lot of people using metal five gallon paint buckets and uh, I got on Facebook yard sales where I found my drums here and there was this 15 gallon uh, barrel and I was like well I think a 15 gallon barrel will be a lot more efficient than just a five gallon barrel. So I went ahead and bought this for like $15, $15 from the guy off of uh, Facebook and I think I paid uh, 20 bucks for this barrel here with this lid on it. So the concept is you cut a hole in the top of the lid and you put your smokestack up there and what that's going to do is whenever you build your fire around the bucket and as it heats it's going to cause gases inside your uh, biochar, your potential biochar charcoal to start burning off. So all that carbon has, needs to have somewhere to go. So it's going to flow out of the bottom of the bucket up through the outs, outside, uh, outside the bucket inside this barrel and then up the smoke, smoke stack where it's going to reburn. So you should have a clean um, exhaust coming out of here as it's reburning all those, um, all those carbons. So we're going to go ahead and mark off our circle. We're going to drill our circle, get our smokestack down in there. And before anybody comments, this is just ducting, and I know this isn't going to last. It's the only thing that I could find at my local big box store until I could get a proper stove pipe in place. This is a six inch uh, diameter pipe. So even whenever I get ready to upgrade, it's still a standard size that we can upgrade to. All right, so let's go get it. All right, so in order to cut our six inch circle, I'm gonna go ahead and mark around our six inch, but I'm just gonna grab some little bit of paint, kind of highlight around. And since all the paint's gonna burn off the can anyway, it's not gonna make a difference. going to grab a uh, metal cutting bit and then get close to the outside edge so we can get our metal cutting jigsaw in there and we just uh, roughly cut in. Looks like it needed to be a little bit bigger. That's nice and snug down in there. Be careful not to poke yourself. A little sharp piece of metal there. All right, I'm gonna take this off, set that to the side. Now, when we put this full of wood down inside of our retort, we need a way for the gases to escape. So we're just gonna drill some holes in the lid. That way, whenever it starts uh, off gassing, the, the gases push out the bottom rather than uh, um, airflow up through there. Because if you get an airflow up through there, you have the potential of lighting the material on fire that's in there but we want the material in there to, uh, to off gas through the bottom rather than um, air to flow up and, uh, and burn off. We want it to stay smothered. So we're gonna put it in there like that when we, have the, when we have it full. So let's go ahead and knock some holes in there. And uh, also when we put it in there, we're gonna have it elevated and uh, wood chips underneath it to burn the, from the bottom and up around. 
so that we're not sitting straight on the bottom of the barrel inside there. All right, so if we're gonna fill this up with wood and we put it down here on top of a bunch of wood chips that are gonna be burned as fuel, we gotta have an airflow down here at the bottom so that it will suck the, the oxygen from the bottom up through here and then out the smoke stack at the top. So we're gonna tip this up on the side and we're just gonna knock some air holes in the, uh, in the bottom there so we can get some good airflow. So I got my large diameter bit and um, you can knock a big hole in the bottom of this. I wanna see how it reacts if I just drill a bunch of little smaller holes and see if we can still get the same efficiency. All right, I think we got enough air holes in here. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up on some bricks. Let's fill it up with some wood and let's see what it does. All right, guys, we come over to our little burn pile where we pile up all of our uh, limbs that fall, of our, fall out of the pecan tree in our yard. And this is where we burn all of our, our stuff. So I came out here and sourced a bunch of old pecan limbs and stuff that was in the pile. It's been under that old pallet and that old um, piece of lue on there and so it should be pretty well dry even though we've had a little bit of uh, rain here recently so if you look here in the bottom I just set off um, I put some piece of fire brick down there in the bottom with those air holes and that's going to kind of keep that drum up off the ground so that it or up off the bottom so that it gets some airflow while it's uh, burning and it'll heat up underneath the bottom also so let's go ahead and and fill these drums up and get started.
All right, I'll give you an update after a while and we'll see how it goes. You get a lot of black smoke going. Once it starts burning off the gases, that black smoke should turn to clear smoke. So I'll update you in a second. All right guys, here's the update. This has been going on for almost three hours. I just kind of left it out here to uh, burn while I did some other stuff. And I came back out here and you can see how hot it got. It has flaked all the paint off of the drum. And I'm standing about five or six feet from it and it is just radiating crazy amounts of heat. And then look right out of the top, you can barely see any smoke, but there's a lot of heat coming out of that. So it's reburning all of the gases that's being emitted from the wood. So it's not uh, giving off any kind of um, uh, dark smoke or anything that you would get from a normal fire. But it seems like it's doing its job uh, just like it's supposed to. So whenever this thing cools down, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna see what happens. So this is a little update. All right guys, it's the next morning. This thing is uncooled off. We had a little bit of a rain last night, not much, but take this lid off let's have a look I'm really excited to see how this turns out because if this turned out and made charcoal we're gonna be putting this in our garden in our orchard and I'm just excited to see what's what that's gonna do for our plants and our trees so. hopefully it didn't burn in there oh look at that look at that we have a whole bucket of charcoal down in there and it looks like it made just like I expected it to I'm excited I think this actually yep all the way through good charcoal all the way through now, um, the ideal thing is if you're gonna add this to the garden, you need to crush it up into a powder. So um, you have the, the most amount of surface material that will absorb all those nutrients and hold them through all the uh, dry spells. And it'll feed that plant and give back to that plant. This isn't a fertilizer. This is an amendment, uh, kind of like a little storage battery. Charcoal will soak up uh, moisture and nutrients and hold them there until the plants need them. So the plants will run their roots down into the surface of that coal and uh, start extracting those nutrients as it needs it. So now you can also, look at that, perfectly carbonized. This was apple. So you could take this apple and put this into your charcoal grill and use this to cook off of. This is the same stuff you buy in the store in the bag. like glass that's great all right guys we've demonstrated the uh, retort for you it was really simple really cost efficient efficient and if you're interested in making charcoal to add to your garden or orchard or even making charcoal to add to use on your barbecue grill this is the way you do it, guys. Stay tuned, we're gonna show you how to incorporate all this charcoal and actually add it as an amendment into your garden and orchards. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed our content, because we got more to bring you. Thanks for watching.